All right, on your mats. On your mats today, let's have a think of how we're feeling. All right, we're on day 25. So if you've been doing yoga for 25 days straight, what amazing. Hopefully your body is uh, opening up, feeling better, and you know, your mind is doing good. That's the aim of the game, all right? So cross-legged, seated on your mat. <clears throat> Just get all the fidgets out of the way. It's amazing what starts making you want to fidget the second you try and sit still and close your eyes. Have you noticed that? <laughs> it's like everything's digging in, bras, all kinds of underwear if you're wearing any. Waistband of your tight pants. <sighs> so get your fidgets out, take a soft inhale and exhale it all out. <sighs> Inhale, slowly lift up your spine. And exhale, <sighs> relax your shoulders. And again, deep inhale. And exhale. Now sealing your lips, just continue that breath. In through the nose, all the way down to the belly. And exhale. Inhale all the way down through the belly. And exhale. This time I want you to imagine breathing in through the base of your spine, all the way up to your belly, and exhale it straight back down into the earth. And again. Beautiful. Open your eyes. Nice soft gaze. Just take a deep breath in. A good morning stretch for me. Yeah, reach up, reach up. Extend the spine. Maybe reaching one hand, reaching the other. Bend the other elbow. Just maybe grabbing opposite elbow. That's it. Feel how your sides are going this morning. And next time that left hand is up in the air, just take it in behind the neck, take hold of your left elbow and just press that elbow down below your neck just to give your tricep, the back of your arm, a little release. You can close your eyes again if you like. changing sides right hand down the back of the neck take hold of the elbow and just try to gently coax the elbow back and you'll feel a nice release down the back of your arms just relax your chin towards your chest
and release. Just slowly draw the shoulders up to the ears, take them down the back. And again, inhale, draw the shoulders up. Draw the shoulders back, taking hold, clasping the fingers together behind the back. Take an inhale. Good, squeeze the shoulder blades together, open up through the chest and slowly see if you can draw the body forward a little. Relax your chin into your chest. Good, take an inhale, press those hands down. Take the gaze up. And exhale, release. Take a deep inhale, sweep the hands above the head. Good, one hand comes down, other hand reaches over to the side. You pick which side feels good for you. Try to reach up with the fingers, try to root down with the tailbone. Oh, got it, sorry. Mosquito bit my bloody finger, but I got him. <laughs> That was very violent, wasn't it? Inhale. How to go from yin to yang immediately. Oh, reactions. Okay, let's settle back down. This is definitely WTF yoga. WTF am I doing teaching yoga? Take an inhale all the way up and take a little twist, a rotation out to the right. Take an inhale, lengthen your spine, and exhale, twist a little more. Good, inhale, back to center, reach up. Look up and rotate round, other side. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, rotate a little more, drop your chin down, close your eyes. Beautiful, release, lift the hands up and exhale, find child's pose for me. So come forward on your mat, onto your hands, your knees, bring the big toes to touch. And on an exhale, draw the bum back to the heels, walk the hands forward, extend them right in front, forehead comes down to the ground and breathe. Try to relax your shoulders for me and your elbows. Let it go. On your next inhale, just fingertip the hands over to the left. Right hand on top of left. And just opening up that right side body. Send the breath into the ribs there. Maybe threading that right hand underneath, left armpit, sliding the shoulder through as far as you can get it, palm facing up, and bring your right cheekbone down onto the ground. Feeling maybe a release underneath the shoulder blade. Through the lats. Deep inhale, deep exhale. 
let your belly go. Slowly release. Bring the hands back to the center, forehead down to the mat, and breathe. Walking the hands over to the right, left hand on top of right, open out that left side, settle back down, really rooting back with your sits bones, elbows are relaxed. Threading that left hand underneath the right eyelid. Taking the left cheek down to the mat. Oh. Try to relax and soften. slowly release. Draw the hands in front. Stretch out the fingers. Take a deep, deep, deep inhale. And slowly draw the hands in towards the body. Bring the feet out. Stamp them onto the floor in front. Well, don't stamp them, place them softly. Everything's so aggressive. Place the fingers towards the bum behind you. And let's take the feet to the outside edges of your mat. Take an inhale and exhale, just windshield wiper the legs side to side because it just feels good. Oh, twist, that's it, inhale. Exhale, allow the neck to go to the opposite direction. Good, drawing the soles of the feet together into a diamond shape for me. Take the palms, thread them underneath the calves. So if you find this difficult, to come forward and you're kind of stuck here it's really good to sit up on a block or a blanket or a rolled up towel it brings your hips over your ankles right so you'll start to see what your body can do the shapes but have an experiment play because it's about getting you into the shape and we're just going to hold we're going to relax the chin into the chest. 
And if you're kind of stuck and it's a discomfort, take an inhale, try to lengthen through the chest. And exhale, draw the body forward a little more. Chin down, relax the fingers, relax the toes. Scan your body, where are you still holding on, just in case it gets uncomfortable. So your yoga practice teaches you so much about your life. Very much so. The type of yoga you enjoy doing teaches you a lot about yourself, right? Are you a pusher? Or do you like a mix? Do you want strict, stern instruction? Very controlled yoga. It's all good either way. Yoga can teach us so much about ourselves. And therein lies the point. And this, again, this practice of asana, this hatha yoga that we do, is only one form of what's known as yoga. This use of movement, posture, shape, breath. And this is one way into getting to know yourself better, your body better. Slowly rise, unthread the hands. Hi, Blue. Draw the, right on time, because guess what, it's puppy pose. Draw the legs back behind you. Come on to all fours, spread the fingers. Just take some cat and cows for me. Tilt the tailbone up, exhale, draw belly button to spine, chin to chest. Inhale, drop the belly. You're not lasting very long these days, Blue. <laughs> and I won't go there. Good, inhale. Draw the belly through. Exhale. So fingers are nicely spread on the floor. Just supporting your wrists. Coming to neutral, walking the hands forward. Let's take some big lion's rolls. So spread your fingers, come forward with the pelvis. Exhale, take it back, close your eyes. Oh yeah, back in the day. <laughs> Exhale, this is where your yoga practice is useful for your real life. Exhale, you learn to breathe. Switching directions, inhale, bring it forward. Soften your elbows. Notice when you close your eyes, you're able to access a lot more feeling. There's a lot less. Your awareness is focused. As soon as you open your eyes, that's even more stimulation coming in. That's why we encourage a soft gaze to allow you to withdraw the senses. Pratyahara in Sanskrit. Good, coming back to center, walk the hands back under the shoulders. Take a deep inhale, curl those toes under. And exhale, walk the hands forward, lowering the chest down towards the ground. It's called puppy pose. Anahatasana, the dogs do this every morning. Now, not for a few minutes. <laughs> so elbows are down, palms in front, draw the chest, it's heart melting pose also. You can bring your chin forward or just drop your forehead to the ground. But I want you to feel like your heart is melting into your mat. You'll feel 
a lot of sensation in the shoulders, the upper back. When you extend the chin forward, this allows the throat area to release. Your bum's right above your hips. And we won't be here too long. Long enough. And breathe. Try to relax through the front of the shins. I just felt how much I was holding on right there. Slowly, take your face off the mat, draw your elbows in, take a deep inhale, and exhale, come on back up. Release the toes, and I'd like you to sit in between your heels. Virasana, hero's pose. So. I'd like you to make sure a few things. Heels right beside your hips, all 10 toes pointing backwards, not splaying out to the side, very important. Now, if this is super uncomfortable on your knees, this is where a block is wonderful to lift up the hips. So any kind of knee discomfort sensation Bringing the thighs together, toes pointed back, heels right into the side. Slowly begin to lower the body backwards. Now, I'll just shift forward a little. Take your time here. All 10 toes pointing back. You can keep your chin into your chest. You can just stay here on the hands. So we're looking for a release down the front of the quads. The hip flexors. Now if you can find your way down to your elbows, great you don't get a prize if you do <laughs> some people can lie all the way back so I'm one of the compromised members of society not just mentally or emotionally so I just find a space where I feel the sensation on my quads on my thighs and I'll just settle where I feel is my edge but not pushing to go beyond my limits, right? My knees are starting to rise off the ground, so that's a signal to come back up here and hang out. Again, the less we strive to look like the pose, more use the body to feel the pose. and breathe.
and close your eyes if they're not already closed. My shoulders are shaking, my wrists are shaking, dear me. It just needs a little more strengthening after four months, no exercise, right? The body needs to come back to life, especially if you've had an injury learning to be more compassionate and gentle with your body with yourself like give yourself a break so if you find you're always pushing yourself and I should do this and I should do that imagine the child inside of you being told you should do this you should do that right Give yourself a bloody break. Just more compassion, more gentle with your self-talk. Talking of compassion, let's be compassionate and get the hell out of this shape. Slowly, oh. <laughs> I'll extract the block from my butt. Coming back onto my bum. And I'm gonna try and extend my legs long. That's it, just take the legs out in front. Give them a little massage. Let's take a wide straddle. So draw the legs out into a wide straddle, wide butterfly. Take a deep inhale and exhale, slowly draw the body forward. So now instead of front of the thighs, you're feeling behind the thighs into the hamstrings. So take an inhale, lengthen. Exhale, slowly draw the body. You can bring your fingers in front if you like. So you hit that edge, that shape, that point where there's no bloody way you can get any farther forward. So take an inhale, lengthen, lift up through the chest. Exhale, slowly creep the fingers a bit farther forward. Maybe you hit another block. Take an inhale and an exhale, slowly fold in. Chin comes into chest. Try to relax your elbows. Maybe your elbows are on the floor because your hips rotate round enough to allow your pelvis to rotate more. Maybe the hands can come together like a little boat. This is an energetic seal. So in yoga we call these mudras, little shapes you make with your hands that invite a certain energy into your life. So this mudra, hasta mudra, hand mudra, a gesture of both giving and receiving. So equal energy exchange in your life. Not too much giving, not too much taking, equal. Relax the chin and breathe.
where you're still holding on in the body, maybe behind the knees. Relax, soften. We find our shape in yin. We find our edge in yin, that edge, that bite in the shape where it's a little bit bloody uncomfortable. Guess what? Life is not always comfortable. So when we get used to sitting in discomfort, with discomfort, and riding the wave of that discomfort, we get better at riding the wave in life. Less reactivity. You can sit and observe what's coming up. You become the witness. Watching the movie going on in front of your eyes. You've got your movie playing out. And then because you live with, in a world with other people, you have the collective movie. So your energy, your thoughts, your actions, all affecting your life, but also affecting that of the whole. Because everything in life is energy, right? Slowly rise. Oh, <laughs> if you can. Good, draw the knees in together. Give yourself a squeeze. And just a nice soft exhale. Cross the ankles. Take a deep inhale up. And exhale, open out the hands to the side. Just a big wide yawn. Next inhale, take the knees behind. Actually, take your left, take your right knee. Let's do swan, because it feels good right now. So, sometimes we call it pigeon. In yin, we call it swan. So bring your hands in front. Take your left knee to the outside, right behind that left wrist. Back leg, let's walk it in. Walk the knee in, toes curled under. Square off your shoulders, square off your hips. And while we're here first, let's draw that heel in towards the body. See if you can take your left hand behind. Catch hold of the foot, catch hold of a piece of your yoga pants. Just a little stretch, just a little drawing of that foot into the body. Gaze over the shoulder and release. Now let's try the other hand. See how that feels. Draw the heel in. Right hand comes behind, grabs the inside of the foot. Gaze over your shoulder. Open out that shoulder. And release. Bring both hands in front. Look down at your foot, wiggle those left toes as far forward as you can. Take a deep inhale and let's exhale, draw the body down onto your mat. Release that back toe, walk that knee back and settle into your swan shape. Good, now if you're always on your elbows, maybe walk the hands out and draw the chest down. 
if you're always up here on the hands, try walking the hands a little farther forward, maybe taking a block or a pillow and bringing it under the elbow so you come a little deeper into this shape. Now, if your knees are really hurting and this is very, very uncomfortable, you can take this on your back. So slowly find your way onto your back if you would like to try the reclined version of this. You lie down, cross that left ankle on the knee, reach through behind the right thigh, clasp your fingers, grab a towel and lay back. Relax that foot, it wants to always hang up here. Relax, put your head on the ground and breathe. So you have two options in this shape. Close your eyes. I'm gonna come back to Swan. I'm just gonna. Oh, back to Swan. Settle in for the long haul. The music was just getting a little too distracting for me. It's funny, I have a friend who talked about this. They said that there's always a TV on in their house, always background noise, always playing. And in another room, the radio music is playing. So the house never, ever settles down quietly, right? Needing that noise. The mind just not wanting the quiet. Can be uncomfortable in the quiet. I think as human beings, we spend a tremendous amount of time trying to avoid the quiet because what will come up in that quiet may be uncomfortable. In your yin practice, you get a lot of time in quiet. And that's the point <laughs> of this style of yoga. Slowly, let's rise, draw that right leg all the way back around, nice and slowly out of these postures. Just crossing the ankles, taking an inhale, reach the hands up and exhale, just fold forward. Just bring the fingers down in front. Maybe take an inhale to lengthen Lift up through the chest again and exhale. Slowly fold in, relax your elbows. Relax your chin. 
Maybe you can draw your body a little deeper. Again, if you have that block or a pillow, maybe resting the elbows. So you're just inviting the body to hold a shape. Really targeting your joints, your fascia, tendons, your ligaments, all the connective tissue that's not muscle, the, the stuff that allows the body to move, not makes it move, right? Your muscles make things happen. You build muscle. We go to the other extreme here. We access the stuff that we ask so much of and it gets very little attention in life. <laughs> Accessing those deeper parts of yourself, literally, figuratively, metaphorically. Slowly rise. Just take a deep breath. And slowly we'll set up for your swan on the other side. So this time, right knee stays forward. That take left leg all the way around to the back. Find your way up onto hands and knees first. Spread your fingers. Take that right knee all the way behind that right wrist. Wiggle those front toes. So take a look at your toes, wiggle them forward, back foot, walk it in to the middle of your mat. Good, first of all, just curl that heel in towards the bum, reach round with your right hand, see if you can grab hold of the foot, just kick it into the hand, grab a piece of yoga pant, just a little extension in the quad. Just take three breaths here for me, spreading the fingers on your mat, pressing up through that hand, slowly release, Switch hands. You can walk your hand into the middle of your mat, grabbing the inside of the foot this time and opening out the shoulder, maybe drawing that foot in a little deeper. Take the gaze over. Draw the heel in a little more and then release. Let's let it go. Slowly draw the body down to your mat. Let's settle in on this side. So I want you to just make sure you don't dump into that right hip. So if, you're, if your right hip's touching the ground, come back over the middle of your mat, the center of your body. 
You can release that back toe, release the chin to the chest. Again, just feel, how does it feel on this side of your body? So you're really developing an awareness with your vehicle, your body in your yoga practice, right? And so if your knee is absolutely, this is ah, 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 signals, right? Signals, pain, pain, pain is sharp find an alternative. You can come onto your back, crossing that right foot, right ankle, left knee. You make a figure four and you draw the thigh in, right? And some days stuff's not going to work. Some days other things are going to hurt because you've probably been doing something else to challenge your body right gardening the other day lifting stuff so my lower back had taken some of the strain right so you have to learn to work with it it's our ego that pushes us i have to do this i have to do it this way and this is what i'm going to do and today i am going to do yoga but sometimes your body needs to rest I'm going to come back to pigeon. So traditional shape into my hip a little more. And slowly rise. The emphasis being on slow. <laughs> Oi. Okay, my favorite. On your backs, let's go. Oh, slowly, slowly find your way down. At last, gosh, I've been waiting for this old bloody class. Draw the knees into the belly. Give yourself a squeeze. Maybe just extend that right leg long. Hug your left knee. Oh, in towards your chest. Good, maybe rotate that ankle a little. And breathe. If you'd like to place your right hand on your hip, now you can stay here with the knee, or you could see if you have a toe bind and extend that leg long. Now, if you don't have a toe, bi toe bind, you could also just bring the hands up behind the calf. Now try to lengthen that other leg. Try to lengthen the other leg. So even, I'd like you to see if you can get to the calf, all right, because it's quite close by. Even if your leg's bent, try to straighten to your degree. If you have the toe bind, take the toe bind, one hand on your hip. Make the other leg active, press it down into the ground.
Try to relax the shoulder. Now maybe opening out to the side with the toe bind or draw the knee in and just take the knee over to the side. Use the other hand on the hip just to ground the hip. So you're just opening out here. Your choice, see how your body feels. Are you a pusher? Are you gonna make this shape happen? Whether your body wants to or not. What do you feel? Your body needs most. I'm going to slowly draw that knee back into the center. Give it a hug. And I'm going to extend my left hand out to the side. So your opposite hand is on your knee. Take a deep inhale. And as you exhale, just let, let's rotate that leg, that knee over with a little rotation over to the right, your head draws to the opposite direction. So as the body kind of corkscrews its way into this shape, I'm having little like the, the, the little releases everywhere as my knee just trying to draw a little closer. My twisting in this thoracic area of the spine, great for the digestive system, right? My insides are getting a good workout right now. Relax your fingers. Slowly rotate the head, draw the knee back through center. Give it a squeeze. And bring the other knee up. Maybe making a little circle around the sacrum. That's right above your tailbone, right above your bum crack. That lower back area, just make a little circle like a clock face, switching directions when you want. It's like giving yourself a little massage. How good would a massage be? <laughs> I think that's the one thing I miss. Ah, Good, now squeeze that right knee in, extend your left leg down. Maybe rotate the ankle. If you'd like to extend that leg, hands can come behind the calf, drawing that leg in towards the body, wherever you can feel that extension in the hamstring behind the knee getting into that ligaments, all your ligaments behind your knees, your ACL, your PCL, your MCL, all those 
ligaments that I blew out once. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> I'm so happy to have some. If you've got the toe bind, you can take the toe, hold on to your opposite hip, just ground it down. Opening the knee or the leg out to the side. Allow the head to come to the opposite direction. So whatever feels good, if you've got the toe bind and the extension, or maybe your knee is rotated out to the side, just bend that knee, just open out. Feel what works for you today. Closing the eyes gets you more into your body, into the sensations. Think about it, your nervous system is like an antenna taking in all the signals each day. Your eyes, your smell, your everything you hear, everything you touch, feel. Everything you eat, all those electrical signals going into your computer of a brain as impulses, frequencies, messages. Your nervous system has to process everything. Slowly draw that knee back into the chest and exhale, draw that knee across the body over to the left. Extend right hand out like an aeroplane wing. Palm face up and take the gaze over. So all that information coming in to be processed. Bloody hell, sounds exhausting. And it is. When it gets so exhausting, what do you want to do? You want to go to sleep. End of the day. Shut down the conscious mind and give it chance to rest. Now, if you're not sleeping well, it doesn't get a chance to rest. And Kind of let everything settle down. So you wake up and you're a bloody nervous wreck. And then what do you do? You drink coffee to wake up, which stimulates everything even more. You get more and more and more exhausted. So what would be a good option in your day, do you think? When can you close your eyes and maybe give it a little bit of a break without, before you go to sleep, during your day? Right, your Shavasana and yoga, maybe your meditation practice, just closing your eyes, conscious, rest, And you think of it as energy and electricity. Draw the knees in towards the chest. Makes it a little more obvious. And beneficial to the body slowly. Let's hit that conscious meditative state. Shavasana.
Let your palms face up, let your feet fall apart. And as you exhale, just melt into the floor. Take a soft inhale and exhale it out through the mouth. And again, soft inhale. Exhale it out. This time, breathe in and hold that breath till you cannot hold it any longer. out there <laughs> just bringing some life to your fingers your toes maybe left hand on the heart right hand on the belly just thank this beautiful body of yours for allowing you to have life feel life live life journey through life today start with today we get one more shot to breathe to move to feel not a bad space to start take a good morning stretch oh yeah any sound come out Ooh. oh hugging your knees into your chest Aren't you pleased I chose to share that nice yawn with you? Rock a little left to right. If 
find your way onto your side. Ugh. <laughs> Can we just stay here? It's kind of nice, huh? Slowly press up. Oh, <laughs> I had a nice big thunk. I don't think you could hear that. Oh. Take a deep inhale and a deep exhale. Beautiful, drawing the palms together, maybe rubbing them a little bit. Yeah, feel that heat, feel that heat. Energy in your body. Place those palms on your heart. Operate from this space every day, from the heart. See what happens. Right, keep this thing open, keep this thing feeling, and keep this thing dealing with everything that's coming up for you. Right, we'll get through another day. We're here, we're all still alive. Good going. Palms together. The energy, the light in me honors the energy, the light in each and every one of you. Namaste.